Let's talk about the different ways to describe vector angles and how to keep track of positive and negative components. It's important to note that we always measure the angle at the start of a vector, not at the end of the vector. In some cases, a problem might describe an angle above or below the horizontal, or right or left of the vertical, which are just horizontal and vertical lines passing through the start of the vector. If we're using an x-y coordinate system, these might align with the x and y axes, and the horizontal could also align with the ground, but it depends on the problem. If we're told that a vector is at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal, the vector could look like this. But the vector could also look like this, and point to the left. If the left and right directions are important to the problem, like if the left direction is negative, then 60 degrees above the horizontal is not enough information. So if we see an angle described like this, it probably means we're only working with positive vector components and positive reference angles. A better way to describe angles is to specify above or below the positive or negative x-axis, or right or left of the positive or negative y-axis. If a problem says that a vector is at an angle of 60 degrees above the positive x-axis, then we must be working with an x-y coordinate system, and this is the only possible direction for the vector. This other vector would have an angle of 60 degrees above the negative x-axis. We might also see vectors described using compass directions, north, south, east, and west. In that case, the directions are still fully defined, similar to the positive and negative x and y directions. If the direction of a vector is described as east, then the vector points in the east direction. If a vector is at an angle of 60 degrees north of east, the vector would look like this. The angle starts in the east direction and rotates towards the north direction. This vector could also be described as 30 degrees east of north. So these ways of describing angles are more accurate, but they still use a lot of words. The last method is the conventional way to describe angles. Positive angles are counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, and negative angles are clockwise from the positive x-axis. Using this method, we only need a single value to describe the angle. If a problem says a vector has an angle of 60 degrees with no other information, then this would be the direction of the vector. We can think of it as the vector starting on the positive x-axis and rotating counterclockwise 60 degrees. Negative 60 degrees would mean the vector rotates clockwise and ends up here. What if the vector points in this direction? Now the vector has an angle of 120 degrees. But we could also describe this direction as negative 240 degrees. There's 360 degrees in a circle, so 360 minus 120 would be 240. The positive y direction is 90 degrees, or negative 270 degrees. The negative x direction is 180 degrees, or negative 180 degrees. The negative y direction is 270 degrees, or negative 90 degrees. And the positive x direction is 0 degrees. So that's how we describe the angle. What about the components? Let's use this vector, which has an angle of 120 degrees. Remember, the vector and components form a right triangle, so we use the trig functions to find the components. But what angle do we plug into sine and cosine? There's two ways we could do this. First, if we want to use the angle that's inside the right triangle, then we subtract 180 degrees minus 120 degrees to get 60 degrees. This is what we call a reference angle. 
The reference angle will always be a positive acute angle between 0 and 90 degrees. The x component would be d, 10 meters, times the cosine of 60 degrees, which gives us 5 meters. This gives us the length of a side of the triangle, but now we need to realize that the x component is pointing to the left in the negative x direction. So we have to change the x component to negative 5 meters. The y component is d times the sine of 60 degrees, which gives us 8.7 meters. It's pointing in the positive y direction, so we leave delta y as positive. We'll see why it's important to keep track of positive and negative components when we learn how to add vectors. The second way we can find the components is by using the conventional angle counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. If we plug 120 degrees into the cosine function, we actually get negative 5 meters for delta x, and we get positive 8.7 meters for delta y. So by plugging in this angle, the sine and cosine functions keep track of the positive and negative signs. It might seem weird using the right triangle trig functions with an angle that's outside of the triangle. But this is how the functions work. If you graph the sine and cosine functions, we can see where the output is positive and negative. The sine and cosine graphs extend in both directions. So if we used negative angles going clockwise, then the functions give us the same thing. One important thing to note here is that the sine and cosine functions give us the positive and negative components. But if we're trying to find the angle using the inverse tangent function, it's going to give us a reference angle, and not the angle that's counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. For example, if we plug in 8.7 for delta y and negative 5 for delta x, the inverse tangent function gives us negative 60 degrees. The absolute value of that is the reference angle inside the triangle. So the point is, we can just plug in positive values for the components, the opposite side and the adjacent side, and it'll give us a positive reference angle inside the triangle. Then we can figure out the angle counterclockwise from the positive x-axis if we need to.